This hour of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by my good friends at Advantage Gold. Advantage Gold is a five-star rated gold company with one-of-a-kind customer service. And when it comes to gold and precious metals, Advantage Gold is the only company I'll work with. Call Advantage Gold today and make sure you let them know that Mark Levin sent you. And now, let's begin. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. What's taking place in New York after the cold-blooded murder of an NYPD officer is illustrative of what's going on between the Democrat Party and the rest of the nation. Donald Trump is a private citizen. And yet he was president. He loves law enforcement. He loves America. That is a big difference from Obama. Big difference from Obama and Biden. Clearly do not. They call it fundamental transformation. An open border demonstrates that you don't love the American citizen. For people like Biden and Obama and, yes, Clinton, this is a big stage. It's all about them. It's all about power. It's all about their party. It's not about country. It's not about the American people. It's a big play. It's a big game. Power, power, power. And they're at the highest tier of power. Two former presidents and a sitting president. Biden has spent his entire life in Washington, D.C., raising money, using government to bully. Obama has spent his entire life as a Marxist. That's correct. Domestic terrorists. Palestinian terrorists and communists, Alinsky and others. This is what's taking place in New York. Biden doesn't give a damn about this police officer. Biden didn't give a damn about the people who have died and doesn't as a result of his policies on the border. The slavery, the brutality, The murder. He doesn't care. He pretends to care about the people in Gaza. But as Mark Penn, Democrat pollster for Clinton, points out, there are six times as many people in Haiti who are, as we speak, starving to death. They have no policy towards Haiti. None. None. They don't even talk about Haiti. I 
There's a brilliant piece in the tablet. It's called The President's War Against the Jews. Biden claims he's a lifelong friend of the Jewish people and he's Zionist, but these empty words are covered for decades long antipathy. And he has this same antipathy toward the American people. When he walked into the Senate, he sided with the racists and the segregationists. He opposed integrating our public schools. That was his position. Now, now, having been an anti-black racist, he figures anti-white racism will get him even further. But even more, it's his anti-Semitism. It's finally come to the fore. He spent a lifetime saying one thing and doing another. And now as president, he sees his opportunity. Israel was attacked, their back is against the wall, and there's a report today that in fact he is denying Israel key weapon systems that they've asked for. He's denying it. And this piece says, for some American Jews, the months since October 7 have felt like a horror movie. As they watch with increasing alarm, is our president, for whom many voted and who many placed in voluble trust, seem to, moment after crucial moment, throw Israel under the bus. And by the way, today, his spokes city announced there's been no change with our policies on Israel, so they just keep lying. Earlier this month, the U.N. report from its office of Special Representative Secretary General revealed that Israel has been saying for months, namely that Hamas committed the most vile sexual violence and torture on October 7. And such treatment likely continues to be perpetrated on hostages. Experts from the U.N., an organization that is routinely hostile to the Jewish state, actually found, quote, clear and convincing information that some hostages have been subjected to various forms of conflict-related sexual violence, including rape and sexualized torture and sexualized cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment, is a quote. And it also has reasonable grounds to believe that such violence may be ongoing. You haven't heard Joe Biden say a word about it. And there's five Americans among those hostages, at least five. In reaction, Joe Biden's State Department chose to level the charge of sexual abuse at Israel. Recently, IDF Brigadier General Amir Avivi recounted his meeting with a senior State Department official since identified as Jill Hutchings. Jill Hutchings, Director of the Office of Israeli and Palestinian Affairs, who proceeded to accuse Israel, quote, of systematically sexually abusing Palestinian women, unquote. The State Department's claim was based on information from Hamas pushed by Qatar's Al Jazeera which ended up deleting the story after it proved to be fabricated. Indeed, Biden briefly expressed empathy with Israel after the heinous attack on October 7. But since then, along with his Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, Biden has been working at breakneck speed to undermine, if not fully impede Israel in its existential battle against the Iran-funded Hamas and Hezbollah terrorists a campaign that is now extended to official blood libels about deliberate Israeli campaigns of genocide, famine, and starvation, killing babies and sexual abuse, culminating in the administration's betrayal of Israel and siding with Hamas at the Security Council last Monday. In the blink of an eye, Biden has gone from framing Hamas as pure, unadulterated evil to putting immense pressure on Israel to stand down. And the pressure is not of recent origin. More than 40 years ago, Joe Biden prompted one of the most famous phrases ever uttered by an Israeli prime minister. In a private session with the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in 1982, Biden threatened Prime Minister Menachem Begin with cutting off U.S. aid if Israel did not stop its quote-unquote settlements in Judea and Samaria. And Begin replied, as we've discussed here, Don't threaten us with cutting off your aid. It will not work. I'm not a Jew with trembling knees. I'm a proud Jew with 3,700 years of civilized history. Nobody came to our aid when we were dying in the gas chambers and ovens. Nobody came to our aid when we were striving to create our country. We paid for it. We fought for it. We died for it. And we will stand by our principles. We will defend them. And when necessary, we'll die for them with or without your aid. Well, Biden's scorn 
Biden's scorn for Israel's current prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is significantly more vocal, referring to Netanyahu as a bad effing guy and an a-hole, language that is difficult to imagine him using about any other leader of a friendly foreign state. More recently, as he swaggered his way out of the State of the Union doing his whispering, leaning in shtick, Biden told Blinken and others, quote, I told him, BB, don't repeat this, but you and I are going to have a come to Jesus meeting. Biden knew he was on a hot mic and admitted as much. He wanted the world to know what he thinks of Israel's prime minister. In a broadcast that, he was putting the squeeze on Israel to force it to forgo its ability to defend itself. In fact, this has been Biden's posture from day one. Biden has made downgrading Israel and elevating the Palestinians while also using them as a pressure tool against Israel, central to his policy in the region. Upon taking office and despite the Taylor Force Act, which prohibits the U.S. from sending certain tax dollars to the Palestinian Authority until it stops funding terrorism, Biden rewarded Palestinian terrorism with U.S. taxpayer monies, ultimately amounting to almost a billion dollars. American First Legal Foundation, where I'm senior counsel, filed suit against Biden and Blinken on behalf of Congressman Ronnie Jackson, Stewart and Robbie Force, parents of Taylor Force, the U.S. Army veteran, the U.S. Army veteran, West Point graduate, murdered at the hands of a Palestinian terrorist in 2016, and Sari Singer, herself a victim of Palestinian terrorism in 2003, for violating the Taylor Force Act. Just because Marek recently denied the government's motion to dismiss the case. We'll see where it goes. Biden knows that payments to Abbas's Palestinian Authority incentivize and reward terrorists and the terrorist operations. His actions reveal he doesn't care. And the same applies to Secretary of State Blinken. His State Department revealed in a March 2022 fact sheet that, quote, since April 2021, the United States has provided over half a billion dollars in assistance for the Palestinians, including more than $417 million in humanitarian assistance for mainly the descendants of Palestinian refugees through UNRWA. Now, UNRWA is that UN organization that was involved on October 7th. Biden has what's known as a whole-of-government approach in his embrace of the Palestinians at the expense of Israel, mobilizing multiple executive branch agencies to work across individual silos, to implement an integrated policy. And just last year, his Department of Homeland Security ceremoniously handed over to the Palestinian Authority a 2,700-year-old spoon dating back to the Assyrian Empire, describing the conveyance as, quote, historic repatriation. There were no Palestinians, and that's the point, that they did it anyway. The State Department's George Knoll, chief of the Office of Palestinian Affairs, described the spoon as, an example of Palestinian cultural patrimony, and that the transfer was a historic moment between the American and Palestinian people. This attempt to manufacture an ancient Palestinian lineage in the land of Israel while denying the right of Jews to settle in their ancestral home was clear. October 7 didn't temper this obscenity. Just one day after October 7, Blinken, in concert with Turkey, called for a ceasefire by a post on Twitter, an ex-post, on the evening of October 8. Blinken deleted the post about 12 hours later, but the message was loud and clear. Stand down and remain victims. Two days later, Biden's National Security Council spokesman called on Israel to show restraint and take only necessary and proportionate action, quote-unquote, to defend itself. The inconvenient truth is there was a ceasefire on October 6th. Hamas broke it with financial and military assistance from Iran. A terrorist state is now flush with billions in sanctions relief as a direct result of Biden's disastrous policy of gifting the Islamic Republic with cash, some of which he helpfully provided barely a month after the October terror attack. And on November 14th, the administration extended a sanctions waiver allowing Iran to access $10 billion. By the way, did it again a few weeks ago. U.S. spokesmen have been repeatedly unable to deny that the monies delivered by Biden to Iran weren't used in funding the October 7 attack because, of course, they were. Now, as if funding Hamas to Iran weren't bad enough, Biden made it a top priority to help maintain open supply lines to Gaza, while also looking the other way as Hamas intercepts and hijacks 60% or more 
of the humanitarian aid from the many thousands of aid trucks coming into the Strip since the start of the war. Hamas either keeps the aid for its terrorists or sells it to non-combatants at exorbitant prices. This is being reported almost daily from multiple sources with social media videos corroborating the reports of Hamas's theft of the cargo. And instead of condemning Hamas for the aid crisis, Biden blames Israel for what his Secretary of State has claimed as an acute food insecurity crisis in Gaza, supposedly affecting 100% of the population. Biden also ignores that Hamas steals the fuel aid to fire rockets and operate its tunnels. When thousands of Gazans swarmed some 30 food delivery trucks in Gaza and a deadly stampede ensued, IDF aerial footage corroborated that the IDF's account was right, showing that Hamas was directly to blame, and they fired, Hamas did, on the Palestinians. And yet both the media and the Biden administration have continued to blame Israel. Now the piece goes on in significant detail with exquisite substance. And the title of the piece is a very gutsy title and a very accurate title. The President's War Against the Jews, and it goes on about anti-Semitism in America and how Biden's doing next to nothing and he won't even speak out against it and he never did at the State of the Union. Biden's taken a side. He's siding with the Islamists. That's where his party is. That's where he is. He's siding with academia. He's siding with Hollywood. He's siding with the media. He's siding with Obama. He's firmly on the side of the Islamists. The tablet, tabletmag.com, published this piece. It was written by a beautiful and brilliant woman, my wife, Julie. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Are once mighty dollars under siege from runaway inflation? For those still working, your paychecks buy less while costs for gas, food, cars, utilities skyrocket thanks to inflation. That's why I'm urging all my listeners to register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. It's a fantastic seminar. They'll teach you how to take steps to help guard your wealth from inflation using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver hold intrinsic value that should remain untouched by government manipulation. Folks, don't wait for the Fed's reckless policies to completely devalue the dollar and steal your life savings. Call now while free registration is open. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic seminar. Call 800-900-8000 right now. The Gold and Silver Summit could provide the vital insights we need to protect our families. 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professional. Nearly four in five Americans continue to support Israel. Breitbart reports a new Harvard-Harris poll released March 27 suggests support for Israel remains strong among American voters. 79% backing the Jewish state over Hamas. And yet what's interesting is that the Democrat Party, young Democrat voters, are moving more towards Hamas. And of course the peaceful Palestinians, which are everywhere, just look around. Uh, and against Israel. And uh, this is a result of what Biden, Schumer, Blinken, Obama are doing to the Democrat Party. This is what they are creating, the seeds of anti-Semitism. And it's not new. It's not new. Franklin Roosevelt did the same thing. And, of course, the Democrats love that guy. There's a lot more going on out there. I'll be right back. Attention, fellow Americans, Mark Levin here with a warning and a solution. I feel like our country is being destroyed by out-of-control spending and debt thanks to Biden and the American Marxists. And your hard-earned savings and retirement could be at risk from their socialist schemes. That's why you should consider Advantage Gold the best of the best, a U.S.-based company that specializes in helping everyday Americans protect their wealth. They have a simple solution to help you even potentially grow your wealth despite the attacks from Washington. I urge you to register for their upcoming Gold and Silver Summit. It's fabulous. A free online event where you'll learn tips to help safeguard your finances by diversifying into physical precious metals. 
Call 800-900-8000. Call them right now to sign up securely for this pivotal summit. It is crucial. Tell them Mark Levin sent you for a special bonus. Call 800-900-8000 right now. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. Mark Levin, the research arm of conservative media. Call in now, 877-381-3811. Let me put a bow around this. I had mentioned uh, this report in Breitbart. A new Harvard-Harris poll released, I guess it was yesterday or the day before, suggests support for Israel remains strong among American voters, 79% backing the Jewish state over Hamas. Breitbart News reported at the time 82% of American voters supported Israel over Hamas in February's poll. So you can see, despite the best efforts of the American media, the Democrat Party, and the elites and ruling class in Washington and other places, the American people aren't buying it. They're not buying it. In February, nearly two-thirds of American voters also supported an Israeli attack on the last Hamas battalions in Gaza. 63% said that Israel should continue its ground invasion into southern Gaza to root out the final elements of Hamas. Of course, the Biden administration opposes it. The Biden administration is now cutting off arms to Israel. And about an hour ago, there's a story out that they're actually talking about putting together a peacekeeping force. It is clear Joe Biden does not want Hamas destroyed. And he does not want Hamas destroyed. Why? Because it is a puppet terrorist operation of Iran. And Iran, in some ways, is calling the shots, as it has been during most of the uh, Biden administration with nuclear weapons. It is the United States, through the Biden administration, that has gone to Iran on bended knee. Which is why Iran has not been attacked by the United States even though they killed three of our soldiers, even though they're funding all the terrorism, which is why none of the effective and most important sanctions that are placed in Iran have been honored. They've been waived, which is why during the course of this war, $26 billion directly has been released to Iran, and that doesn't include tens of billions of dollars in oil. Receipts that they're getting from, among others, communist China. There is some kind of deal, ladies and gentlemen. I've said it before. Iran likely will not reveal the fact that it has a nuclear weapon until after the election. Which is why it has watered down its its visual material. That is the heart of a nuclear weapon which can quickly ramp back up. Why would it do that? Because it was asked to do it. That's why. Mark my words on this. Joe Biden's not just selling out the state of Israel. He's selling out the United States. He's not going to do anything to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Not a damn thing. He's paying for it. He's funding it. Here's another poll. Daniel Greenfield. Half of Muslims believe Hamas has valid reasons for attacking Israel. Poll shows U.S. Muslims support Hamas. Recent Pew survey in the war showed that half of Muslims in America, 49%, believe Hamas has, quote, valid, unquote, reasons for attacking Israel, while the majority, 54%, also reject the idea that Israel has the right to defend itself against Islamic terrorist organization Hamas this is in the United States unlike the vast majority of Americans Muslims are the only group where less than half agree that the October 7 murders rapes and kidnappings were wrong one in five Muslims in America 21 percent were willing to admit they support the October 7 massacres nearly one in three claimed to be unsure whether burning Jewish families alive in their homes was wrong Only 5% believe that Israel's military campaign on Hamas is acceptable. 68% believe that Israel's attacks on the Islamic terrorists are not acceptable. 67%, these are Muslims in America, have an unfavorable view of the Israeli people. 
not the Israeli government, but the Israeli people. But as it comes to the Israeli government, 86% oppose that. Well, only 8% of Americans have a favorable view of Hamas. One in three, 37% of Muslims in America, this is all Pew, are willing to admit to a favorable view of a sanctioned terrorist organization. 60% in the U.S. resent that America is, quote-unquote, favoring Israel. Well, they don't have to worry about that, because that's not the case anymore. And he says these numbers are troubling because they pose a threat not only to Israel, but to America. Support for Islamic terrorism in one part of the world can often translate to support for terrorism elsewhere, including in America. Hamas is an arm of the Muslim Brotherhood, which has built an extensive infrastructure in America. When the Brotherhood took power in Egypt before being removed in a popular uprising with military backing, many Muslims here in the United States rallied to support it. In fact, Barack Obama rallied. He opposed the overthrow of the Mus- of the uh, of that government by the military. Muslim Brotherhood terrorist groups operate not only in Israel or in the Middle East, but around the world. Al-Qaeda was formed as part of a fusion with a Muslim Brotherhood splinter group. Osama bin Laden was one of a number of Al-Qaeda leaders who had been in the Brotherhood. And the Muslim Brotherhood is on every campus in the United States of America through its student groups. It has built up organizations that control mosques and represent Muslims on Capitol Hill. Some of those organizations also did everything possible to undermine America's war on al-Qaeda. Now some of them are cheering on the Houthi jihadists as they battle the U.S. Navy to sink as many of our ships in the Red Sea as they can. The Pew numbers show quite clearly that a surprising number of Muslims are willing to express support for Islamic terrorism. How many share their views but are more circumspect about telling them to a stranger on the phone? That is something we may only find out too late, he writes. While one in three Muslims will admit to supporting Hamas, one in two claim that Hamas has valid reasons for attacking Israel. And hardly any believe that the victims of Islamic terrorism have the right to fight back. That is the final number that truly matters. Some will claim to reject Islamic terror, but very few are willing to actually support non-Muslims who fight back against terror. While the Pew poll offers plenty of bad news about Democrats and their support for terror, This is in part driven by growing Islamic role in the Democrat Party, the media, and public life. That is the phenomenon reflected in the David Horowitz Freedom Center's election jihad report, which showed that Islamic activists were gaining statewide offices around the country and using their positions to defend Islamic terrorists while opposing efforts to put a stop to their violence. And look at the universities and colleges. There were three times as many Muslims as Democrats support the Hamas atrocities October 7. Twice as many Muslims as black Protestants and other group least, less friendly, uh, least friendly to Jews believe Hamas has valid reasons for fighting Israel. Over twice as many Muslims as 18 to 24 year olds, the most pro-Hamas age demographic, support Hamas. These views do not represent an American range, but a dangerous un-American one. The support for Hamas and the opposition to Israel among Muslims in America is not a reflection of American politics, but of Islamic ones. This is also true of the anti-Israel campaign. The majority of Muslims don't just oppose Israel, but the Israeli people. This is not a disagreement with a particular government, but with an entire people. And it goes on. Those are frightening numbers, are they not, Mr. Producer? Now, I have friends who are Muslim. The bank manager I deal with comes out of Pakistan. Wonderful guy. Zudi Jasser, who I've endorsed for the house in Arizona. Wonderful guy. So, obviously, there are many, many wonderful people of the Muslim faith. The problem is there are many who are not. There are imams. There are people who are speaking who are caught in the internet. The group CARE, which is a Hamas front group. Students for Justice in Palestine, another Hamas funded organization. You have the Marxists, the Soros types, you have the Islamists, 
They're on the march. They're on the move. They don't represent a majority of Americans. That's precisely why I gave you the poll numbers from the Harvard ISPIS poll, which shows 80% of America supporting Israel over Hamas. But it is this group that Joe Biden is embracing. It is this group that Joe Biden is embracing for two reasons only. Michigan and Minnesota, politically. But in his heart and soul, Joe Biden has always believed, as, he, as he's revealing himself today, always. He's always been a fraud, which was the point of my wife's piece in the tablet. And then finally, to wrap this up, because I do want to get to other things, Newsweek. Hamas hails Biden's clear changes on Israel policy. The heads of the two leading Palestinian groups at war with Israel, Islamic Jihad and Hamas, have praised Iran's role in an increasingly international conflict over the Gaza Strip and talks with Tehran's top authority. Now, Biden has denied Iran's role. Blinken has denied Iran's role. And yet Iran is funding the whole damn thing, and they're getting all their money from Biden. Directly and indirectly. Biden has blood on his hands. Biden funded October 7th. Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Yabadabadu held back-to-back meetings in recent days with the chair of the Hamas movement, the political bureau, the secretary general of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad movement as well, both in Tehran. Both Palestinian leaders conveyed their gratitude for the support shown by the Islamic Republic since a Hamas-led coalition of armed Palestinian factions led an unprecedented attack on Israel on October 7. This is Newsweek. Sparking the deadliest flare-up to date. During the meetings on Monday, the Hamas chief took aim at not only Israel, but also the United States for supporting its ally throughout the conflict. And yet, noted the changes that are taking place. Changes that are taking place. Hamas hails Biden's, quote, clear changes on Israel policy. The spokesman today was asked about that by Jackie Heinrich of Fox. She pressed her hard. There's been no changes in our policy towards Israel just because we're cutting off weapons and arms for them. Just because we're giving tens of billions, a hundred billion to the Iranians, far more than we've ever begun to the Ukrainians. Just because we're demanding that the Israeli people throw out their leaders, their elected leaders, just because we're demanding that Israel carve up its country, just because we're making all these demands on Israel, while we're funding Hamas through UNRWA, while we're funding the PLO, while we're funding Iran, while we're rearming Iran, while we're doing all these wonderful things, cutting off arms to Israel, investigating Israel for war crimes, doing all these other things, we haven't changed our policy, America, any more than we're responsible for inflation, any more than we're responsible for the open border, any more than we're responsible for undermining our military and law enforcement. No, no, no. That's Trump. That's MAGA. They're doing all these things. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. My fellow Americans, we're living in very perilous economic times. Washington seems determined to bankrupt our nation with endless stimulus spending. As they devalue our dollar, hardworking Americans like you could lose everything. That's why I urge you strongly, register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. They'll teach you how to help guard your wealth using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver can offer a defense against the dollar's devaluation, and the experts at Advantage Gold will explain how you can convert some of your savings into precious metals that can protect and potentially grow your wealth. With currency debasement from Washington and global uncertainty on the rise, gold and silver diversification could offer you some stability. Call 800-900-8000 right now to sign up. 800-900-8000 now. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. Thank you. 
Has uh, Lamarxus James, the uh, putative attorney general of the Empire State, uh, New York, has she brought charges yet against John against John uh, Stewart Leibowitz, Mr. Producer? Did he not inflate the value of his condominium uh, for the purpose of selling it and deflate its value for the purpose of paying taxes? That's what I read in the New York Post. Didn't you read that, Mr. Producer? Didn't he say everybody should be treated equally? That he's tired of these millionaires, uh, self-promoters, uh, posing as victims? I think he said those things. And so the question is, will John Stewart Leibowitz, a.k.a. Johnny, a.k.a. John Stewart, will he be held to account? He's a multimillionaire. Will he be held to account under the fraud no proof of fraud, no requirement of fraud statute, that the fraud, the Marxist James, brought against Donald Trump? And I think that's a fair question. Now, I wonder if the clapping seals in his audience will will be able to ask that question. Of course they won't. We saw what happens when somebody speaks out. We saw Karen Whoopi Goldberg. Yes, her real name's Karen, the irony. We saw Karen on The View get very upset when a male member ooh, of the audience, which they really frown upon, dared to take out his iPhone and started taking pictures. She got angry. She got out of her seat. And I thought she was going to mug him or something. Very angry. That's Karen for you. One of the things that annoys the hell out of me is that these, uh, this river to the sea crowd, these Jew-hating Nazi types who want to literally, you've, you know push Jews back into concentration camps. They get all this attention by the media. I just told you, 80% of the American people support Israel against Hamas. 80%. You wouldn't know that by watching television. That means the vast majority of people between the two coasts, between the two coasts, outside of TV land, stand with Israel. Because the vast majority of Americans, like the vast majority of Israelis, share the same belief system. A belief in a civil society. America's founding principles. And as I've told you many, many times, people who hate the United States hate Israel. People who hate Israel hate the United States. Joe Biden has never loved this country. He's never lifted a finger for this country. He's been on the public dole. He's used his name and his office to make millions, he and his family. His brother Jim is now under two investigations, in part due to the uh, the hospital issues in which he used his brother's name, apparently, in order to get some, some dough. That's what I'm reading. Runs in the family, doesn't it? I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. More evidence that the Democrat Party has moved, and now swiftly, towards a totalitarian party. A party alien to, really, our political process. Is what's going on in New York tonight at Radio City Music Hall, Stephen Colbert, the moderator, Clinton, Obama, Biden. A big event for massively wealthy people. Oh, they have some seats for $200, $250. That's for show. You're not raising $25 million tonight with $200, $250 seats at Radio City Music Hall. So millionaires and billionaires are coming together to support Biden and to see Obama and Clinton. 
We had a guest on last night, has a fantastic book, and she pointed out that nine of the top ten wealthiest counties in America vote Democrat. I will add that those with an average income of over a quarter of a million dollars a year vote more Democrat than Republican. There's a shift taking place. The question is whether people who are being screwed by the Democrat Party actually understand that they are being screwed by the Democrat Party. They do the class warfare thing. Biden, who never held a private sector job, a multimillionaire. Obama, who never held a private sector job, worth hundreds of millions. Bill Clinton, who never held a private sector job, I'm talking about other than a few years, very wealthy, multimillionaire. These are people who became rich, not because they created a business, not because they invented something, not because they developed anything, not because they're good at anything. These are people who became super wealthy as a result of power. Power. And for too many corporatists and others, that's what they're drawn to. When you look at these totalitarian regimes, one form or another, they have this upper tier that lives extraordinarily well. They live well despite the fact they haven't actually done anything other than accumulated power and destroyed or defeated, and in those cases overseas, killed anybody who challenges them. In Biden's case, he wants to put Trump literally in prison. And so for these potentates, rejiggering society, reinventing human nature, eliminating the notion of free will and individualism, setting an industrial policy, even though it's really a degrowth policy, overseeing a less prosperous nation so that people aren't, they aren't persuaded by capitalism that they can be successful. They're persuaded that they have to rely on these politicians and their party for their sustenance. We're there right now, and that's what New York is showing you tonight. That's what this event is showing you tonight. The Democrats are going to very heavily outraise the Republicans. Three to one, four to one, I'm sorry to say. Because the shift has already occurred. The shift has already occurred. With some exceptions, obviously, there's always exceptions to the rule. The fact is the Democrat Party is the party of the billionaire. The Democrat Party is the party of economic socialism and cultural Marxism. So what they're involved in is redistributing freedom. Those who throw in with the Democrat Party, largely, will be free. They'll be free. They won't be harassed. They won't be imprisoned. Not in every case, but largely. And those who don't, won't be free. Parents who want to defend their children against iron-fisted Soviet-style teachers' unions. Pro-lifers. Anybody who they disagree with. So we talk about the redistribution of wealth, and we are having a redistribution of wealth. Under Joe Biden for 50 years, as a senator, as a vice president, president, we've had what they call the reverse Robin Hood effect. We're stealing from the middle class and giving to the wealthiest. Not necessarily through our tax laws, but through our regulatory processes. Who's getting wealthy off of subsidies for electric vehicles? You're not. Who's getting wealthy off of subsidies for solar panels? You're not. Who's getting wealthy off of subsidies for those damn propellers in the ocean that are killing the whales? You're not. What kind of subsidies are you getting? None. Almost none. And so, as George Orwell pointed out, that's right, the man who wrote 1984, among other things. 
Just use the word democracy. Because democracy can be used to sell tyranny. Because people throw the word around democracy, he writes, who have their own personal meaning for what it is. That is, democracy is an authoritarian regime that decides what everybody gets, if everybody gets, how everybody gets, how much they get, and so forth and so on. That's democracy. I would take it further. That's their word for freedom. That's how they throw the word freedom around. That's what you're seeing now. There's been a massive shift. The American Marxist movement has its home in the Democrat Party, and Marxism is never about, quote-unquote, democracy or republicanism or constitutionalism. It's about an elite ruling class with an iron fist dictating policy. You shall not drive a combustion engine vehicle that takes gasoline. And so they're going to outlaw it. They're literally going to outlaw it. They're reaching into your home to outlaw certain appliances. They're going to drive up your costs through the roof. Less than 5% of people in this country own electric vehicles. And they're telling us that within eight years, they want it to be two-thirds. Well, you don't want it. The dealers don't want it. The manufacturers don't want it. Their unions don't want it. So Biden uses the EPA, which is unelected. They put out a regulation that he had to approve. He had to approve it. That will make the gas mileage requirements and the pollution requirements on a vehicle that uses the combustion engine and gasoline so onerous, it'll make it impossible. You cannot build, you cannot engineer a vehicle like that the laws of physics kick in, and it's just not possible. They want you to live in smaller and smaller homes and smaller and smaller areas, more and more densely populated. So now they're going to eliminate single-family home ownership in the suburbs if the suburbs want any federal subsidies whatsoever. And of course, you have Democrat mayors and city councilmen and supervisors, or whatever you want to call them, who are all in, in a lot of towns. So they're not going to fight it. They're not going to fight it. They're going to support it. And so Washington, D.C., like Moscow or Beijing, or however, they're going to have these maps, and they're going to determine what your communities are going to look like. You'll have absolutely no say. The strength of America, its diversity of, of power, from towns and cities and counties, the state, the federal level, will be completely turned on its head. None of those other subdivisions of government are going to matter, and yet they're the closest to you. The bureaucrats will decide. The bureaucrats will decide what kind of vehicle you'll have. The bureaucrats will decide what kind of home you're going to have. And trust me on this, the electrical grid cannot handle all this. And so what's to come will be brownouts, blackouts, rationing of power, There'll be determinations made on how far you can drive, how many vehicles you can have, the square footage of any home you have, how many homes you can have. It'll all be in the name of climate change, but basically in the name of economic socialism and cultural Marxism. And one day it'll be too late. It'll be there. And how do you reverse it? You can't. It's over. Because elections won't matter. Elections will be a process you go through to create the the veneer of a democracy or a constitutional republic. A veneer. You're a vote, but it won't matter. Because there's a permanent government. And effectively, there's a monopoly party, a one-state party, the Democrat Party, and they have a one-state media, the media today in America. That's what you're watching. If the Democrat Party were really for the poor and the little guy, why are so many billionaires contributing multi-millions of dollars to it, Mr. Producer? Why are there more billionaires and multi-millionaires enriching the Democrat Party than the Republican Party if the Republican Party is the party of the rich? Folks, you've got to think this through. Why? Because the Democrat Party 
is where the action is for the corporatists, for the big companies. They don't give a damn about democracy or constitutional republicanism or all the rest of it. You look at the boards of most of these companies, whether it's broadcast companies or any other companies, they're filled with leftists. You look at these major foundations that were founded by industrial titans, they were taken over by leftists, the Ford Foundation, the Packer Foundation. You can go on and on and on. Big oil men, big insurance men, the MacArthur Foundation, one of the biggest insurance magnets in American history. It's gone. They're all gone. The Rockefeller Foundation. They're owned by leftists, and they have hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars to advance their cause. And they use it. We've talked about this before, but a reminder is always important. Plus, people come and go. Antonio Gramsci was an Italian communist. Now, Mussolini had originally been a socialist slash communist, but he created what, what we now call fascism. Because in the end, they're really the same. They come to the same conclusion differently. I mean, Xi is an is a iron-fisted strongman running a communist regime. And he said, and he wrote, that Marx was wrong about something here. And I write about this in American Marxism more recently in the Democrat Party Hates America. He says, look, they have these vast middle class who actually go to war to defend their countries, the proletariat. They're not going to rise up and overthrow it violently. So what do we do? He said, what we do is we take a little slower path, but a sure path, and we march through their culture slowly but surely. Well, what does that mean? That we devour their culture, one piece at a time. Their churches, their media, their government offices, law enforcement, the justice systems. They'll never expect it, and they won't know how to stop it. That's how you destroy the United States. That's how you destroy the West. That's how you impose communism. Lenin agreed with him. Of course, they had a violent revolution. But he called it centralized democracy. See that word that Orwell's talking about? Democracy? The biggest genocidal evil maniacs on the face of the earth use the word democracy? And of course, today Joe Biden throws it around. He's defending democracy. You see, Trump wants to destroy it. What does he mean by that? Does he mean by defying Supreme Court decisions? Does he mean by defying Immigration law and having an open border? Does he mean that by defying Congress, by defying the will of the people, by imposing on us these electric vehicles and all the rest of it? What does that mean, democracy? And of course, they're always the great defenders of democracy because you have to create the devil. They're the angel. You have to create the devil. So Trump is the devil. Trump is Hitler. He has to go to prison. We got to clear the field, get him out of the way. How dare he challenge what we're trying to create here? How dare he he challenge the permanent state and do these things? We cannot have that, and we will not have that. And never forgave him for beating Hillary Clinton because she was supposed to continue the revolution. Another one. Another Alinskyite. She wrote a 92-page paper. On Alinsky. Remember how long they tried to keep it secret? It was Barbara Olson who exposed that. The late, great Barbara Olson. So if you're wondering why Lunch Bucket Joe has never carried a lunch bucket, if you're wondering why Joe Biden has become a multimillionaire because his family has sold his name and his office to the communists and others, If you're wondering why Joe Biden is burning down our society, you don't remember he, like Obama, promised to fundamentally change America. It's because of power. And just like in communist regimes, the Communist Party comes before the country, certainly before the people, 
And for the Democrat Party, it comes before the country and it comes before the people. And they have their media, MSNBC, CNN, and all the rest of it. We're marching right behind them and clicking their heels. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand-new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Here is uh, Media Research Center Newsbusters having axed former RNC chairwoman Rona McDaniel as a contributor NBC's Today returned Thursday this morning to doing what the network does best, being fanboys and fangirls for their liberals, writes Curtis Halk. This time they cheered President Biden's upcoming attempt to re-energize his re-election campaign, quote-unquote, with a star-studded campaign event at Radio City Music Hall with former Presidents Clinton and Obama, CBS late-night host Stephen Colbert, and celebrities such as Lizzo and Queen Latifah. First of all, Mr. Producer. I can endorse candidates. In some cases, I can even campaign with candidates. I can't do fundraisers for candidates. How does this guy Colbert get away with this? Radio City Rally. President Biden looking to re-energize his re-election. Beam co-host Hoda. What the hell is her name? Codpiece. She's everywhere. Accompanied by Chiron star-studded Biden fundraiser, co-host Savannah Guthrie. Set up senior White House correspondent Gabe Gutierrez's piece by boasting Biden's looking to boost his re-election campaign. They're celebrating it. Imagine that. The American media and the Democrat Party kissing each other's fat asses. I'll be right back. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Mark Levin, Liberty's General Patton. Call into the Mark Levin Show now at 877-381-3811. Newsbusters. After fretting, Donald Trump has his own plans, quote-unquote, as if him being in New York is a nuisance. And he was in New York to give respects to a cop that was murdered, to go to the wake and to embrace the family. Gutierrez of NBC, the Today Show, went back to ogling over Clinton, Obama, and Biden. This morning, the Biden campaign is preparing to host a star-studded fundraiser with three presidents, Biden, Obama, and Clinton, in a conversation moderated by late-night host Stephen Colbert. The event is also set to feature appearances by Lizzo, Queen Latifah, and Ben Platt, among other celebrities, as Democrats set their sights on the general election. 
Now, he conceded that Biden's poll numbers are ticking up, but still shaky. And with Biden and Trump running neck and neck compared to Biden holding steady leads at this time in 2020, which has meant they need dear leader Barack Obama to save them and take an increasingly active role in the campaign. Gutierrez threw a jab at Trump over Obamacare before finally footnoting Trump's New York visit is to highlight violent crime in the city and attend the wake of NYPD officer Jonathan Diller, who was shot dead in the line of duty. Gutierrez couldn't leave it there or say more about Diller's murder. Instead, Gutierrez had to pair what, with Trump's escalating his attacks on the judge presiding over his hush money trial. Really? And so the escalating attacks on Clarence Thomas by the Democrats, what's that all about? Don't you hate the media? And you hate them because you know what they are. They're whores for the Democrat Party, every damn one of them. The NBC correspondent concluded with more liberal fluff, celebrating the fact that, quote, Democrats have outpaced Republicans when it comes to fundraising in recent months, and tickets for the Radio City Music Hall event going from anywhere between 250 and half a million. So the Democrats are holding a fundraiser. Is that national news? It's what we call the pseudo event. But they get all the free media. It's being pumped and pumped and pumped and pumped. The Democrats are being funded by the people who they subsidize. The Democrats are being funded by college students or former college students who choose not to pay their student loans. Have them now subsidized by you and me. And of course, everyone wants a piece of the action. Look, here's what they know. The more centralized the government gets, the more ubiquitous the government is in our everyday lives, obviously including the economy, then they have got to support the party and the individuals who are in charge of what? Handing out the goodies. Or getting exemptions from taxes. Are doing all those things that they need to do. They are buying influence. That's what they're doing. They know there's a permanent government. They know the Democrat Party controls much of the judiciary. They know that they are a, uh, a party in the ascendancy. They are a party that is monopolizing the culture. And they want to be on the right side of that. They want to be on the right side of it. Now, in addition to that, as I said earlier, you have these boards of directors... In many of these corporations, they come out of the radical elements. That's why they have DEI, ESG, CRT, LMNOP. That, in part, is what's taking place. But, of course, they're for the little guy. I'm sitting here thinking, how so? Now, in addition to this... They're raising the money, not just to raise money. They're raising the money to subsidize their army of fanatics that they'll send from sea to shining sea, from the river to the sea, to get out their vote, and of course, in some cases, to voter harvest. Right? What's voter harvesting? Voter harvesting is a weird phrase for stealing an election. After the fact votes, I'll go back and see if, you know, the senior citizens in that nursing home, wink, 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 have all filled out their ballots. There's absolutely no way to police any of this. No way, which is why they do it. Then, of course, if you object, oh, you must be a racist. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're an oppressor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Billionaires and millionaires. Billionaires and millionaires who pretend they're for the little guy. This is how it works. This is how it's always worked with authoritarianism. Xi still pretends he's for the little guy, is he? Castro, the little guy in Cuba, they're starving. Have you heard about that economy? It's dead. They can't find food. They can't find toilet paper. They can't find anything. It's like, uh, you know, the blue states during the pandemic. But this process is going on. And here's the thing. We've talked about this. And I don't know that I explained it well enough. Let me give it another shot. And yet people vote for this, right? 
They vote for their own demise. They vote for their own demise. Now, why do they do that? I'll give a couple of reasons. Number one, they don't believe the things, for instance, that I'm saying in writing. Can't possibly be happening. I've been a lifelong Democrat. My parents, my grandparents, the people before. Oh, yeah, Democrats. They're for the people. So they've been indoctrinated, propagandized targets to believe that the Democrat Party is the party of civil liberties and civil rights. The Democrat Party is the party of equality. It's standing up for minorities and poor people and so forth. So that's been, you know, beaten into people through many avenues and platforms. The party, the Democrat Party was the party of civil rights. Actually, to the extent the Democrat Party did anything, it was doing it back against the Democrat Party because that was the party that was violating civil liberties. And they did very little, actually. And none of it could have been accomplished without the Republicans. None of it. They've succeeded in their propaganda because they have a free media. As all tyrannies must. I don't mean free in terms of competitive or objective. I mean free media time. Day in and day out. What comes through the tube. What comes through much of radio. Is Democrat Party propaganda and talking points. Over and over and over again, the big lie. There's a book called Propaganda. I've quoted it in my book. It was a favorite of Adolf Hitler's. It was a favorite of Woodrow Wilson's. Just talking about how you sell your policies. And how you make things seem seem like one thing when in fact they're another thing. The use of words, the use of phrases, the use of repetition. It's all in the book. Propaganda, that's the name of the book. Guy wrote it, he was very proud of it until he realized the Third Reich was using it and then he got very upset. But it's not just the Third Reich. It's people of totalitarian mindset all over the world, including in our own country. As I said, the book was used and one of the progeny of its authors was hired by Woodrow Wilson uh, in order to advance not just his campaign but his government policies. Because many of these policies that are pushed by Biden and the Democrats are extraordinarily unpopular. Open borders and so forth and so on. And so they have to wrap them and camouflage them in propaganda. They have to find what I said before. They have to find devils or create devils character assassinate, to point fingers elsewhere. If they can just get more of your liberty and get more of your property, Nirvana will be here, we'll all live in paradise, and so forth and so on. They're never satisfied with the status quo, even though they're mostly responsible for it. They never embrace our founding principles. They never talk about them. Property rights, yeah, that's funny. Individual liberty, oh yeah, right, 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 we got that. Due process, well, come on, what are you talking about? Hitler doesn't get due process. And they're raising enormous sums of money to fund this army of fanatics as well as relentless propaganda on your TV and in social media. Relentless. Trying to turn a lie into truth. That's why they're raising all this money. Remember, this is the same Biden who signed some kind of an executive order giving the bureaucrats four hours off on election day to vote and four hours off on election day to work the polls. Where'd that come from? And gave them the biggest increase in 40 years. Where'd that come from? And gave the student loan forgiveness, even though the Supreme Court said, no, it's going to reach a trillion dollars to buy more votes. Where'd that come from? To talk about abortion, if abortion's going to be banned, even though abortion is more prolific and ubiquitous, than even before the Dobbs decision, because his most steady demographic vote, more than the black vote or any other vote, single, childless women. It's in my book. I looked at the research. They got to turn that vote out. They got to turn that vote out. Those women, many of them in the suburbs, many of them in gentrified areas of our cities and so forth, they got to get that vote. More than any other vote. 
And then he realizes, even though the Islamic population in this country is about two, two and a half million, that they're centered in a few key states, like Michigan and Minnesota. And so Biden's gone full anti-Semite, full anti-Israel, full river to the sea Islamist. He's literally cutting off arms to Israel as I speak, arms that they've specifically requested, among a hundred other things. And there they are. Well, you're trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Well, you have these credit cards with usury interest rates that you're paying to the banks. Well, you have to make decisions about what kind of food you're going to bring home to your family. Well, you have to decide if you're going to maintain your car or not, or how you're supposed to do it. And your utility bills, you hate the mail, don't you? I hate the mail. Comes in every day, you're always, what's the next bill? What's the next bill? How am I going to pay it? The party of the people, the party of the little guy, the party of the middle class is having a huge party right there. Radio City Music Hall. Some tickets are half a million dollars to raise $25 million. To do what? To convince you that wrong is right and up is down. That Joe Biden is going to save democracy. That Joe Biden would secure the border, but for the Republicans. That the economy, well, it's stimming along beautifully. You just don't get it yet. That climate change is our greatest existential threat. That Hamas needs to be supported and Israel needs to be destroyed. He wants to demonstrate to you all these fantastic things he's done. He's cut the deficit by $1.7 trillion. No, the COVID money ran out. That's why. He just lies and lies. That's our Joe. And by the way, they don't know that I have these. You don't have what? Classified information. That's what he tells the ghostwriter. That's how he got $8 million. He sold that classified information effectively to the publisher. I don't blame the publisher to write a book. He needed an angle. That's how he got his $8 million. He sold out the country. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. All right. I actually found it, Mr. Producer. I want to encourage you folks to download the podcast platform that I'm on. I'm on several of them. So you have it in your back pocket. And I meet it. And you'll understand why in the future. Very, very important. Very, very important. Oh, Mark, I listen to you on the radio. Absolutely, 100%. We have great affiliates. Don't get me wrong. But I want you to download the podcast. This is a call for a Levin surge. Everybody listening right now, Everybody listening right now, don't ignore this. Don't put down your phone. I'm quite serious about this. Now, you can find all my full podcasts, interviews, and specials on YouTube. You go to youtube.com at Mark Levin Show, or you search Mark Levin Show in YouTube. For the podcast, simple, 
Go to MarkLevinShow.com. That's the mothership. Click on Audio Rewind and select your favorite platform. That's it. Or search Mark Levin Show in your favorite podcast app. And so I want to strongly encourage you. Download the podcast app. So I'm with you all the time, no matter what. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877 877-381-3811. We've now reached a point in our media and in our country where you can be an out-of-the-closet, vile, hateful, poisonous, cancerous, bigot, racist, and anti-Semite and have a primetime show on MSNBC. And I'm talking about Joy Reid. Some of you might say, gee, might she not sue you for saying those things? Go ahead. And I will counterclaim for tens of millions, and I will win. Mr. Producer, we have audio of this woman and things she has said recently and in the past and things she's written, don't we? In a heartbeat. Her and MSNBC. I want you to listen to this. This goes more to the point of what I'm saying which is the Marxist-Islamist radicalization in the Democrat Party and in their base and in their media. These people don't represent you. They are so filled with hate and contempt, and yet they make millions of dollars. Now, pretend she's not a TV host on MSNBC, and just pretend That she's somebody you hear speaking, let's say, in a grocery store or on a bus. Cut one, go. And a right wing blue check account that's been boosted by Elon Musk in the past just blew straight past the dog whistling, tweeting to its 276,000 followers, quote, Baltimore's DEI mayor commenting on the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's going to get so, so much worse. Prepare accordingly. The post included a clip of Baltimore's black mayor, so, Brandon so let, Scott. So let, let's stop a second. So some guy posts something. I don't know who it is. They have 267,000 followers. So now this is the basis, you see, for what's going to be her... Her vile rant. Her vile rant. You do understand, Joy Reid, that your network hires Islamists, that your network has Al Sharpton, right? You do understand that. You do understand the history of that. And you do understand when you look in the mirror, Joy Reid, you see somebody who has horrific posts in the past on social media. Homophobic, vicious, vile attacks on people of color, on Jews, on gays. You remember that, right? But let's go. Go ahead. I, I cannot believe I have to say this. Brandon Scott was elected with 70% of the vote in 2020 in a city that is 61% black. So by right-wing logic... What do you mean right-wing d- logic? Who do you mean by that? I never said this about the guy. I don't know anybody who would say this or did say this about him. You went digging, or somebody did, and you found this guy on the the internet. I mean, how cheap is that? To use it as a foil to start slashing and burning at the country, slashing and burning at white people, slashing and burning at right-wingers. You know, they mean conservatives. This is how it's played. You see, this is what they do. She's not alone. Go ahead. Higher would have been a white man, which, of course, is what they want. Only the white Christian men may have the things. 
Oh, yeah, only the white Christian men, which is why we oppose Joe Biden. Last time I checked, he's white and he's Christian. He's a Catholic. You're a racist, disgusting buffoon. You go digging, or somebody does, for the worst of the worst on the Internet. Then you use it to project your hate that you came to that network with, that you've always had in your head and in your soul and in your heart, that you showed as a blogger. And now you take it national with your 12 viewers on MSLSD. You can't have Rona McDaniel, who's a weak, moderate Republican. No, 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 no. We can't have that. We can't go against the narrative. We're here trashing people. White Christian men. All you white Christian men. Aren't you all the ones who posted that? All you white Christian men who oppose Joe Biden. Oh, that kind of destroys the narrative, but it doesn't matter. Because Joy Reid is a bigot. Got that, Joy? Go ahead. At this point, it's evident what they mean by DEI, right? Okay, it means black people. It's the reason the right complained about... DEI doesn't mean black people. In fact, some of the most prominent authors who've written about this are white people. A husband and wife. A combo of professors. It's all in American Marxism. But black people, too. Is that okay, Joy, if people know that? That is black people writing about DEI. I don't even understand your point. Do you understand your point, Joy? On the one hand, you argue like a black nationalist. On the other hand, when people embrace it on the left or Democrats, that's a good thing, right? So if other people point it out, Then the race, I I don't even understand what you're saying. Do you understand what you're saying? What's the point of DEI? What's the point of it? If it's not meant for minorities, Joe Biden has said it is. The people who quote unquote invented this said it is. You say it is here, the white Christian men. So you need DEI, right? In order to address what is a white dominant society. Otherwise, why have it? So what the hell are you talking about? You don't even know what you're talking about. You're just so busy with your bromides and your hate and your racism and your bigotry, you can't control it. You're not even coherent in in spewing it. Which, of course, is what they want. Only the white Christian men may have these things. Oh, that's right. Only the white Christian men, like the, the white Christian men. Now, I'm Jewish, of course, but the white Christian men, the vast majority of whom take up space at Arlington National Cemetery. Those white Christian men. Is that what you mean? You're so filled with hate. It's sick. Who lives this way? Who thinks this way? And you dig into the Internet. I'm sure you'd find it on Facebook. I'm sure you'd find it on Instagram. I'm sure you'd find it everywhere. To pull this out, to attack Elon Musk, to attack white Christian men, who obviously all agree with whoever posted that, while you, with your sleazy background as a blogger, you, with the poison and cancer that's always come out of your mouth. Well, what is DEI then? I must be missing something. What is critical race theory then? If it's not to attack the so-called white dominant, white privileged society, what is it? Isn't DEI there to address that? Isn't CRT there to address it? Now, I'm not buying it. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying, isn't that why they're promoting it? But who the hell knows who this blogger, this uh, commentator is on the Internet? As far as I know, they're just like you, Joy, when you used to do this. 10 or 15 years ago with your poison. Go ahead. Theory. It's not fashionable to be openly racist anymore in America, unlike what they call the good old days. So what are you to- talking about, you buffoon? You see, this woman hates you. I don't care what race you are. Racism knows no specific race. People are racists. If they're racists. She hates you. Look at the generality she speaks about. 
openly racist anymore in America, unlike what they call the good old days. Go ahead. Black mayor as a DEI mayor gets the point across, right? Nobody so referred to him as a DEI mayor other than this person who posted, who has these followers, and we're not even clear if the followers even agree with it, but somebody posted something on the Internet. And this is what she gets out of it. This is what she does with it. A complete broad brush assault on 60-65% of the American people. Yet it is she who slobbers all over Joe Biden. It's she who slobbers all over Rachel Maddow. It's she who slobbers all over Joe Scarborough. All white people last time I checked. But don't get me wrong. They're the, they're the good white people, you see, because they agree with me. You're sick. Absolutely sick. You should be anywhere near a TV platform. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Welcome back, America. I'm going to make decisions on where I'm going to cut and where I'm not, but I want to hit this. Mark Penn, as I mentioned, he's a Democrat pollster for Clinton, but this is a serious man. He's, he's sort of a moderate in a Lieberman mode. And he wrote a piece that we discussed last week, and he says, look, Biden is so focused on the civilians in Gaza. He says nothing about what's going on in Haiti. And so I find here in Barron's, in today's Barron's, and I don't normally read Barron's, but there it was. Haiti's situation cataclysmic, says the UN. The situation in chaos racked Haiti is cataclysmic, with more than 1,500 people killed by gang violence so far this year, more weapons pouring into the country. In a fresh report, the UN Rights Office detailed how corruption, impunity, and poor governance, compounded by increasing levels of gang violence, have eroded the rule of law and brought the state institutions close to collapse. The situation in Haiti is a cataclysmic situation. Impoverished Haiti which has long grappled with violence, has been rocked by surging clashes since late February when gangs launched a coordinated offensive to demand of Prime Minister Ariel Henry resign. Henry, who's led Haiti since 2021 assassination of his predecessor, President Jovenel Moise, promised more than two weeks ago to step down after a transitional council is set up. The reaching that stage has proved exceedingly difficult. In the meantime, the number of victims is skyrocketing. The UN Rights Office determined that gang violence has left 4,451 people dead, another 1,668 injured. The report described rampant sexual violence, including women forced into exploitive sexual relations with gang members, rapes of hostages and of women after seeing their husbands killed in front of them. And it highlighted the recruitment and abuse of children, both boys and girls, who are unable to leave the ranks of gangs for fear of retaliation. Sounds like Hamas. All these practices are outrageous and must stop at once, UN Rights Chief Volker Turk said in a statement. The report also pointed to the so-called self-defense brigades set up to counter the intensifying gang violence, warning that they continue to take justice into their own hands. At least 528 cases of lynchings were reported last year, including 18 women, according to the report, while 59 more have been reported so far this year. Despite an international arms embargo put in place to try to stem the violence, the report said there was still a reliable supply of weapons and ammunition. Called for tighter national and international controls, it is shocking that despite the horrific situation on the ground, arms keep pouring in, Turk said. 
Thursday's report today also reiterated the need for an urgent deployment of a multinational security support mission. Now, here, here's the thing. There's 11 million people in Haiti who are starving, who are being subjected to these horrific abuses, murder, torture, rape. In other words, the complete collapse of the civil society. And, and frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I've written 10 books, nine of which are intended to defend the civil society. So we don't turn into this. And this happens all over the world, but in Haiti especially. And we have people like Joy Reid and others who just keep tearing at the fabric of the country, just keep trying to destroy the principles of the country, just keep at it day in and day out, and the big corporatists give them platforms to keep banging away, pounding away, trashing, destroying our history, destroying any harmony. That's what the Democrat Party has become. No, let me fix that. That's what the Democrat Party has always been. The Democrat Party was a civil war between the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. It's what it was. It's what it was. Democrats supported slavery. Republicans didn't. And the Republicans have supported every single Civil Rights Act that's ever been proposed and voted on. Not the Democrats. And that's what we're up against. And now it's what I call civil rights Marxism. That's what Joy Reid is. She's a phony civil rights Slash Marxist. Joy Reid doesn't spend any time on the slavery going on on the southern border, even though the vast majority of the people being enslaved are not white. Even though it's happening under a white president by the name of Biden. And by the way, under a person of color, vice president. The level of slavery, sex slavery, women and children, and yes, boys and men, The level of that taking place has not been seen since the end of the Civil War. And Joy Reid still fighting the Civil War. Which, by the way, the good guys won. She spends no time. Instead, they're they're going on the internet, you see, and they find some sleazeball who's talking about the mayor of Baltimore with DEI hire, whatever he said. I don't know. I don't care. He's on the internet. What do I care what's on the internet? Do I sit here, Mr. Producer, and grovel over what's on the Internet? Never. You lose your mind. Yes. It would be like me going on there, seeing the attacks on me, by the way, from the left and the Islamists, the Marxists and the Islamists, about Jew this and Jew that. And I go on Fox and I say, see this? America sucks. See this? All this anti-Jew stuff. See this? I don't do that. But that's what she does. I don't do it. Because I know it's a cesspool. That is the internet. But it's also a way for us to communicate with each other. So here we have Haiti. I think we we can say with some confidence that it's overwhelmingly black. And it gets virtually no attention by Biden, by Kamala Harris, by Blinken, the Secretary of State... Virtually no attention whatsoever. Instead, they're, they're crapping all over the state of Israel that's trying to defend itself, eliminate terrorists who attack them, try to save as many Palestinian civilians, despite the fact that they voted for Hamas, and despite the fact that almost 90% of them support on what happened on October 7th. There's nothing being said or done about Haiti. What's that all about? The new American Revolution starts here. The Mark Levin Show. Call in at 877-381-3811. There's some big, prominent Republican fundraiser who's a prominent never Trump. Who raises a ton of money, apparently. His name's Eric Levine. No relationship. We're very economical here. No E on the end. Big fundraiser for Nikki Haley. He pledged never to vote for Donald Trump after January 6th. 
He just sent out an email to his big network of other donors. He said, due to a dramatic change in circumstances, I've decided I'm going to vote for Donald Trump in November. And that's what we need. People to wake the hell up to what's going on in this country. That's exactly what we need from these repubics. Welcome back. All right. Let's take some calls, shall we? Let's go to Alan. Baltimore, Maryland, the great WCBM, our wonderful affiliate there. Alan, how are you, sir? Well, good evening and happy Easter on Blessed Passover, Mark. Well, let me say this. I understand during Easter, Joe Biden actually hides the eggs and then goes and tries and find them. Have you heard that? <laughs> After the rabbit lays them, of course. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Alan. Go right ahead. Happy birthday to WCBM. Today they're celebrating 100 years. Really? On the AM dial. Well, happy, happy birthday, WC. We've been there a long time. Great, great station. We love them there. And uh, I tell you what, Mark, I've listened to you for years and years and years. And I greatly appreciate and admire your intellect and your, your wide-ranging points of view. Well, thank you. And now, Is there, a shoe there comes drop? a point. <laughs> nope. Not me. But now there comes a point where that which is antidotal can no longer be denied. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden is not running this country. Mm -hmm. Because if you look very closely at the past three years, I would like very, very much for you and any member of your audience to name something that Joe Biden did that Barack Obama did not do. I think what you mean that Joe Biden supports that Barack Obama does not support. And in that sense, I agree with you 100%. I do believe that Obama has uh, secreted his uh, ideologues, his staffers all around Joe Biden, although Biden brought Blinken on in his own. But all of this radicalization, I actually think it's Obama and Sanders that they that their staffs actually run the government. And I think that's why Obama's desperate for Biden to get reelected, not only to stop Trump, who he hates, they all hate him, but to continue these policies. These are extraordinarily radical Marxist-based policies. That's what they are. And uh, you're exactly right. Alan, thank you, for, thank you for telling us it's WCBM's birthday. Happy birthday in Baltimore. I happen to love Baltimore. Thank you for your call. We have a daughter who, well, I won't say where, but she's a doctor, and she's fantastic. Um, And um, we go there frequently. Now, there's parts of Baltimore that are very dangerous. Hell, there's parts of everywhere that are very dangerous. You've got to know the difference between dangerous and not, at least somewhat. And there's some very beautiful areas there. And, of course, that's where we go, to the beautiful areas. But that said... It really is, uh, in many respects, a nice town, but it's got all the dangers and all the problems of every other town. And, of course, now with the uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse, it's a big problem. Oh, and now they want to change the name of the bridge after they build it. Did you hear that one, Mr. Producer? That's right. We'll change it to the Biden Bridge. But Biden has, you know... Unfortunately, I have to drive up and down 95 from time to time. And in Wilmington, I think it's Wilmington, right at the border with New Jersey, they've got the Biden Travel Center there, Mr. Producer. I always make it a point to make a stop there. You understand what I'm saying? We want to go to the... No, no. 18 more miles to the Biden travel center, whatever the hell that is. I'm, I'm going there. But wait, 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 not, not. The Biden travel center, or whatever they call it. I got to go there. And so that's what I do. To give my respects, a.k.a. disrespects to Joe. Name everything after these idiots. It's like, uh, it's like Bird in West Virginia. We got Biden in, Wil- in Wilmington. Whew. Let's continue, shall we? I think I shall. Uh, Let us go to um, Ron. Salem on KSLM, Oregon. How are you, Ron? 
Shalom, my brother. You, you, you know who I am. Black hair in Oregon. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes, sir. I want to go ahead and show out this pattern. I've seen it 51 years ago at Maxine Waters. This is, a, you know, even we go for that in the 19 uh, Wilson era on the basis of Joy Reeds, the Maxine Waters, Corey, the squad, and all these other Jezebels, including the Jezebelian heart that we got for vice president. The By the way, Ron is a... Uh is a black American conservative Republican, just if people are wondering. Go ahead, Ron. Yes, I am. And I'm proud of being an American. We leave all the other, because I got Creek and Amen. I'm Irish. I wish I was Jew, too, but someday. <laughs> but nevertheless, my brother. I'm anointing you. Point Welcome. Is, thank, oh, thank you. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. But the point is, is that this is right out of the pits of the 1880s to 1920s, the Wilsonian area of the Fabian Socialists, the Marxists, the Crowleys, and everybody else. They divide, they would segregate the Democrat Party, minus the one I do respect, but it's Dan Patrick Monahan, because he did tell us what was going to happen when you start the Great Society. But this is all to circle back around that same hatred, that same division, using the usual suspects. We can even talk about the NAACP, W.E. Du Bois, the founder of it, who went to the Dunnigan School and associated with those, those He's a communist. that big money. Yes, he was yeah. a communist. And the point is, when a person like myself addressed these things in, the, in my capital, my Speaker of the House won't even address me to speak. They had six state troopers on me, sir. Six state yes. troopers just to address Well, you're a very dangerous house. man. You know about Crowley, and very few people do. Yes, sir. Crowley, I've, he's just evil, and he, you know, he's receiving what he deserves. But to make a long story short, getting back to the main point, is mm -hmm. this. One... But these people that said that they care, they're using this DEI. DEI is the new segregation of the Marxist party we call the Blue Jack Buds, okay? And the point is, is that they are dividing. They're spending money to, to destroy the communities at the same time. They are enabling criminality. They reward criminality in a way just like Antifa or Black Lives or Mansions because they didn't do nothing. Patrice Cullors didn't do nothing to help the communities, but they are backed by big money like Soros, the Chinese government. And this well, is right. all, again, it's going through and basically undermining our sovereignty and everything else. I got an adopted father who was my ag teacher and lives in Tulare County. He, I call my black, my wife, Belly Holly. He got glasses like him, six foot five. <laughs> and when you take the incentive out of him, of a man I know for 41 years, 41 years ago, and divide... Because they, oh, if you're in a rural country, with you're a white racist or this racist or that racist. You know, I got me. one minute. My, okay, my grandfather, um, and we're, like I said, a Creek Nation family that came over from Oklahoma, 200 other families. They didn't see color in Arizona, in no. Parker or Post in Arizona. But the point is, we got to go against it. We got to go. Troy Reed is a we, very evil person. MSNBC. NBC, Comcast, the Umbrella Company, very, very evil. To allow somebody like this to have a microphone, a megaphone, to spew her constant hate. She lies about white people. She lies about black people. She lies about other people of color. She lies about our country. She's unhinged. And, you know, that's part of the problem with the media. And so they, they give her a platform. And the only platform she should have is a soapbox on the corner screaming at people walking by. Thank you for your call, my friend. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. We have Joe Trenton, New Jersey. What Trenton makes, the world takes. That's what the sign says on the bridge. And no offense, nobody knows what the hell Trenton makes. Go right ahead, my friend. Okay, Mark. Since the day that you were on Fox and Friends first, um, Fox and Friends Sunday, you've been an eye opener for me, and I, and I thank you very much for that. Uh, Mike, uh, Mark, thank I you. want to address the issue of Ken Buck and Mike Gallagher in the uh, in Congress. Mm -hmm. For since 1989, I was an independent distributor of uh, Italian bread. I used to go to. Uh, Restaurants, delis, and uh, pizza shops. Oh my God! Start I my love day. Italian bread. But anyway, go ahead. You know, I'd start one o'clock in the morning and I'd come home one o'clock in the afternoon. I worked three hundred and sixty days out of the year 
with mm-hmm. no vacation time since 1989. And to see these guys quit midway mm-hmm. through their, their last year in office and stick it to the people in their, in their state, the so workers true. that went door to door, they went in the bad weather, the good weather, mm-hmm. they made the phone calls. And then there's people, other people that, that I heard, they might step down as well because they're afraid to answer questions about Donald Trump. These guys are cowards, and they're and and they're. Can you ever imagine people. the Democrats doing that? Ever? Menendez is holding on with his fingernails, and nobody's trying to push him off the bridge. Not at all. Listen, all. you make a very very important point, and I've wondered this myself. These guys couldn't hang in for another half year. The case of Buck. Buck has gone um, bat crap crazy. Uh, he's he's grifting now. He is uh, he's bizarre quite frankly. Uh, The case of Gallagher, he came under a lot of heat for his vote against impeachment, and he should have. And he says it's a family matter. He's got little kids. I got it. But your point, Joe, is crucially important. You know damn well your party's hanging on by a vote or two. You know damn well that we can't afford to have Hakeem Jeffries in the House of Representatives and Schumer in the Senate with Biden in there. So what the hell are they doing? But to me, Joe, it's like the Nikki Haley's. Nikki Haley still hasn't endorsed Trump. <laughs> and she was out there, said she won't run if Trump runs. Then she says she'll endorse Trump. Now she's the anti-Trump. She's done a complete 180. And then done another 180 and another 180. And it's Republicans like this, if we lose, it's on them, as well as the media, as well as the Democrat Party. But these Republicans, I mean... Trump is so horrible. We had four years of Trump. She served as this U.N. ambassador, for God's sakes. She didn't resign in the middle and say, we need younger generation. We need a younger generation, older generation. We need a statesman. Somebody who's going to help save the country. And at this point, with what's going on in the border, crime to our military, the Marxists and the Islamists, what they're doing to our our allies, all the rest of it, if you can't bring your damn self to put your crap behind you, whatever it is, to help us save our country, then you're worthless to me, like Nikki Haley. Certainly so far. What do you think? Uh, definitely, Mark. Definitely. Now, but you work. Mark, you break your ass. You're delivering bread every day. You don't get a vacation. And yet, Joe Biden claims to represent guys like you. Guys like you. While he's at a $25 million fundraiser, And he's not there with guys like you who are struggling. He's there with guys like Obama, who became rich off the presidency. With guys like Clinton, who became rich off the presidency. With guys like Biden, who became rich off the communist Chinese. What do you think of that, Joe? You hit the nail on the head, Mark. All right, my brother. Wish I knew you. Wish you were close. You deliver exactly what I love. You know what, folks? Thank you. I like bread more than desserts, and I've had to cut way back because I've lost like 25 pounds, and I want to lose a few more, but not a lot more, but it's bread. I love bread. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, the men and women who make this country work like our man Joe, you truckers out there, and all you heroes, freedom fighters, our brothers and sisters in Israel, we stand with you, the nation does, whether Biden does or not. See you tomorrow. 